Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? What's going on, everybody? Um, today is going to be a, a special day because, uh, again, once again, it is another uh, coach's corner. So just wanted to share some 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 new news, um, share some some insight. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, again, my name is Sugar Ray Destin Jr. I'm the founder and CEO of BOBM Publishing LLC. We are a full service publishing house that has helped over 400 authors become number one bestsellers on Amazon. And so today is another one of those episodes where, as I as I told y'all at the beginning of the year, I want to make sure that uh, that people are getting this information that'll take them to the next level, right? And so there's a in in that 400, there's several that are brand new authors and several of you out there who have been thinking about it. How can I how can I get my book out there? You know, I'm I'm really excited about writing a book, but it's been on my heart for the last 20 years, the last 10 years, the last five years, and I just don't know where to start. I just don't know how to get this thing going. Well, that's what this is all about. Um, the top mistakes that new authors make. And I'm going to say new, but it's also new and existing authors because um, little known facts. I did this over what I did this over over eight years ago was when I published my first book. But it took me. It took me well over um it took me well over five years to get that first book out, right? So with that being said, I learned a lot of things along the way. I didn't just start this, this publishing house because I wanted to publish people's books. I didn't just start this publishing house because I said, oh my God, this is a good way to make money. No, I started because of my heart for people and people that were being being cheated in the industry, people that were, were losing because they had great books but they just were sitting on the shelf. So um, a few things that I'm going to touch on with you all today is, is how to make your book continue to go, continue to blossom, continue to, to sell long after that first initial phase of uh, that first buzz goes away. Right. So as, as you know, when I do these coaches corners, I like to go, high level, just give you the answers. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to break it down. So we'll probably spend about 30 minutes to an hour in this session alone, just talking about the mistakes that authors make and how to correct those mistakes. Now, so get your pens and your pads ready because this one is for you, specifically for you. So some of those mistakes that uh, that people make, one of the one of the first mistakes that people make, and I know y'all probably can hear, can barely hear me because I got the microphone way away from me. Um, one of the one of the first mistakes that people make is that they stop promoting themselves. They stop promoting. They think, you know, we hit bestseller or, you know, the book is out. Everybody knows about it. And then they stop. Little known fact, there's over 20 million books that are out there. So you're competing for the attention of the masses in a sea of books that are already out there. Um, you start listening to others who haven't done it. And this is especially true for people who are just starting to write their book. Um, they're just starting to write their book and, and they're like, I want to write a book. And then they start listening to people who have never written a book, never thought about writing a book. And, and here comes that doubt. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's too much work. You can't do it. Um, it there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. Um, you start thinking that the that the work is done. Like I said, after the book is is finished, that's when you begin the real process of putting in the additional work. Um, you stop looking for opportunities. New authors do this all the time. They have a book. They feel like, OK, I've made it to this to this plateau. And they stop looking for for opportunities to really get in front of other people. You got to keep going. You have to keep going. Um. This is a big one that I see. Um, most people don't even have copies of their own books on hand. They don't have copies of their own books on hand. So if you don't have copies of your book, what are you going to sell? They're going to send them right back to Amazon. And most people that tell you that they bought your book on Amazon are not buying those books. you got to have copies on hand so that you can sell them. Um, there's 
poor branding. And when I when I'm talking about branding, I'm talking about the the website, I'm talking about the author pages. I'm talking about places that people can actually find you. You have no online real estate. This is important. People are always looking for you, and if they can't find you, they dismiss you. Let that one let that one sink in for a second. Um, next one is they're not supporting others. They're not supporting others. Plain and simple. If you aren't supporting someone else, why would they support you? If you aren't supporting someone else, why would they support you? Think about that. Reciprocity. Lauren Hill said it a long time ago. All I'm looking for is reciprocity. How do I get some reciprocity? Um, they stop growing. They stop growing. And what I mean by that is they stop, they stop learning. They stop listening to, to coaches. They stop listening to um, podcasts. They stop listening to audiobooks. They stop looking for online training where they can continue to grow. As, a, as an author, you're an entrepreneur and you have to continue to grow. You always, always be learning. I know it's bad English, but you know, in the sales world, I say always be closing. So I'm going to say always be learning as an author. Um, and then the next one is a lack of communication. This one is so, so big in the uh, in the author community that it is it is it's awful. Right. So let's go back. We're going to we're going to take it and not necessarily in that same order. But I want to give you some tools to help you through these mistakes that authors are making um, so that you don't continue making the same mistakes as everyone else that's out there. Right. So the first one, let's uh, let's go into listening to others who who have not done it. This one I, I like to call the um, this is where you where you start jumping into the uh, the curse of excellence. You start jumping into the into the curse where you don't feel like you're good enough. You don't feel like you have the tools to be successful because if you're listening to others who haven't done it, they'll say things like, well, you're not, you're never going to be as big as JK Rowling. You're never going to be as big as Stephen King. You're never going to be as big as Stephen Covey. You're never going to be as big as Tony Robbins. You're never going to be as big as Robert Kiyosaki. You're not going to write the next think and grow rich. You're not going to write the, the next how to win friends and influence people. Why are you even, why are you even putting yourself out there? You got a good job. You have done, you have done so much already. Why do you need a book? If you're listening to people like that, my first my first answer to you would be to get away from that crowd. Right. You can love them from a distance, but surround yourself with people who have done it, people who have already walked the road before you and that are willing to either mentor you or coach you. There's a difference between a mentor and a coach. As you see behind me, I have coach, which means that when someone comes to me at this point, I don't look for mentees. I'm not looking for someone that I can take to the next level um, because I just feel feel it in my heart. I love those people who do consider me a mentor, but I'm a coach, which means if you come to me for my services, then I've put in the work. I've put in my blood, sweat and tears for many years. Long before you knew me as an author, I was doing amazing work in the community. Long before you knew me in the community, I was doing work in the in the college and leadership. So I've put in the put in the work. And there are several of us out here who have actually put in the work. And we do charge for our services because we've already taken the grunt work out of it for you. Now, if you're coachable, we can take you to another level. If you're not coachable, then you're going to continue bumping your head and blaming it on those who have walked before you. When the honest truth is, um, be coachable, be coachable, and watch the results that that come as a uh, that comes as a result, right? So instead of listening to people who have not done it, start listening, start taking in, start taking the time to listen to those who have done it before you. Find yourself a mentor or a coach. If you can find a mentor these days, salute. If you are not able to find a mentor in your area, there are coaches worldwide that have put in the, the blood, sweat, and tears. They've already written their books. They've already helped several people to get their books out there. Start listening to the information that they're giving and 
watch the results watch how fast they take that learning curve your learning curve when you start off is very steep but what a good coach or a good mentor will do is help you to lower that learning curve right um the next thing is is that they they stop promoting thinking that okay i've published my book so now um amazon and these bookstores are going to do it for me the honest truth is those companies have set up multi-billion dollar businesses and they are not concerned with one author they're not concerned with one book the people that they're promoting that you see they have they have ads that are running on those platforms there are authors who pay for ads on amazon there are authors who pay for ads on barnes and noble there are authors who pay for promotions on half price books there are authors who pay for promotions on books a million because they understand that in order to get in front of more people you have to be on a bigger platform but as a new or an existing author you cannot stop promoting just because you feel like people aren't listening here's a here's a little known fact most people are watching you from a distance they're watching to see how long you can stay consistent they're watching to see how much you believe in the book that you wrote because if you don't believe in the book that you've written then what makes you think others are going to believe in it if they see that you promoted it one time that's great that's amazing but the honest truth is they are still on the fence about am i going to go and buy this book if they go and buy this book and they're disappointed in the work that means they took a chance on you when you weren't even willing to take a chance on yourself because you stopped promoting after week two after that first week you were excited your your book is out there there's just buzz it's, it's, it's this feeling just like the first day of school first day of school you go to school you got your brand new school clothes and you're you're in there and everybody is giving you compliments man i like that outfit i like this outfit i like what you what you wearing same thing happens to your books because on that second week when is when most people run out of clothes and that second week is usually when most people start running out of steam for the the new thing that's out there because you put in all this time getting the book together and now that it's out there you think that people are just going to naturally go and buy the book some people have to see that book three four five six seven fifteen times before they even want to want to communicate with you about how to buy the book some people will instantly uh support you because they know you they love you they've been around you their entire lives and as a result they're going to go and support you but what happens after week two after week two is when you really have to keep it in front of people because that's when more people that you don't know the the likes when somebody else has liked your liked your post and on the algorithm they start seeing so and so like this post and they shared your they shared your book and it went out to a certain amount of their audience people are still looking and they're watching you have to continue promoting yourself you have to continue promoting yourself on your platforms whether it be anytime you see you meet a, you meet a a stranger hey how you doing um you like to read of course they like to read some people do like to read some people read enough in in high school and middle school that they are done with with reading but there are a lot of people who are still out there looking for something new to read there's facebook posts there's instagram posts there are, are linkedin posts all the time where people are looking for new books leave a comment that has your book and a link to purchase your book directly from you don't send them to amazon send them to your website right um because that's how you continue promoting that's just one way of promoting but you got to keep talking about it otherwise people forget that you even existed because think about it if every week a new friend says that they have a book what happens in that second week when you're not mentioning your book they forget about you it's not that they don't want to support you but they forget that you had a book you might have posted it on a week that was off of their payday and they were looking to they were looking forward to going back and getting that book on the week that they got paid well you stop posting 
How can they support what they don't know exists? How can they support what they forgot exists? You got to continue promoting your books, promote it with graphics, uh, just a, a quick 3D image of your book and an excerpt from your book, a picture of you with an excerpt from your book. And in the first comment, drop a link to purchase your book. These are the things that you can do, just simple things that you can do to keep the buzz going for you as a as a new author. What I'm going to do, listen, I got to I got to take care of the company that takes care of me. Um, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. Be right back in about two and two. I'll see you shortly. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Sugar Ray Destin Jr. I'm the founder and CEO of BOBM Publishing. We've helped over 400 new beginners become best-selling authors, not just best-selling authors, number one best-selling authors. And so a lot of times we hear from people that haven't written their book or people that have already written their book and the buzz is gone. How do I keep this buzz going or how do I write my first book? Well, we've listened. We've heard you. We've heard you. We've heard you. And we've taken taken the time to go back and create a university specifically for authors. It's called Best Selling University. The enrollment is opening up on March 1st. So less than two, less than two weeks from now, you'll be able to enroll in Best Selling University. Now, is this is this uh done for you publishing no this is all information that you can do at your own pace self-paced courses that teach you how to write a book how to market the book and if you want that group or one-on-one -on -one feel we have some additional courses that are coming we're bringing back our flagship course the business of books mastermind which helps so many people to understand how to brand how to market how to build an audience and the opportunities that come from your book so this is exclusively for you. If you've been sitting on the couch and you've been waiting on that opportunity to get your book out there, get in front of the right people and maximize those opportunities, Best Selling University is for you. There will be a, an investment for it. But once again, most of the courses in Best Selling University are self-paced. We want you to succeed as new authors because, believe it or not, we didn't start with 400 number one best selling authors. We started with a dream we started with a plan we started with a we started with fear in our hearts just like you started um and from authors who've been there and done it to now teaching you the strings and the ropes so that you don't have to go through the you don't have to go through the years and the months and the days and the weeks of trying to figure it out for yourself we put it all together for you in one platform so that you can go in for yourself and a self-paced self -paced time. And if you decide that you want to publish on your own, by all means, the guides will be there. If you decide that you want to work with BOB on publishing, by all means, we'll have access, you'll have access to our exclusive Facebook group, Best Seller University. But all we ask is that you take a look and take it serious. This is your opportunity to take it to the next level. Don't sleep on yourself. And remember, Everybody has a story. It's time to write yours. We love you guys and look forward to seeing you inside of Best Seller University. Hey, hey, right back at you, right back at you. Listen, Best Seller University is coming. The enrollment will be open on March 1st of 2023 so if you're watching this today on uh february 19th that means you have about i want to say a little bit over 10 days or right at 10 days uh to get ready for to be enrolled into bestseller university and there are some amazing courses that will be inside of this uh inside of this platform now the next thing next thing that we want to want to touch on inside of this this uh this session we already went over three or two things which is listening to others who haven't done it and the authors stop promoting these are some of the mistakes that new um authors make all the time and experienced authors as well right um i know a young lady who has a book when she when she published she, she probably bought about about two three hundred copies from her publisher and those copies just sat in a box 
um, for the longest. And so I want to touch on the next thing. Most people do not keep copies on hand. Um, if you don't keep copies of your book on hand, then how can you sell it to somebody that is looking for it? Right. Um, a lot of people do not understand that you can you can create a link for them to purchase it and ship it directly to them using media mail i just gave you just gave you uh a bunch of game because when i first started i had copies on hand but what was i doing i was going to i was actually going to the ups store right in my in my lack of knowledge and paying full price to ship those books out when i would ship those books out it cost me about anywhere from 10 to 10 to 11 dollars which the books at the time were only $15. So you do the math. How much was I paying for the book plus the cost of the shipping? I was actually losing every time somebody ordered from me, not to mention the Square or PayPal that I was using at the time would take their percentage. So I was actually spending about $2 to, to get those books out there. Now, the thing that dawned on me, um, one, I had, a, I had a cousin who had just written her book um, Trinice Peterson, she asked me, she said, cousin, she said, she said, I love your book. I, I enjoy it. She said, I just got my book out and I want to know how do I do I ship my books? Because I'm I'm looking at these shipping prices and they are outrageous. What can I do? I said, well, I haven't found anything yet. She said, no, nah, that that can't be right. She said, let me go because we're spending spending anywhere from nine to, to twelve dollars per book to send these books out. That's not cool. So she went and she was actually the one who went to the post office. And when she went to the post office, they they told her about media mail and media mail is actually exclusively for those of us who are sending books or magazines out. You get it at a much reduced cost. Um, the average cost of media mail here in Texas is about three, three to three fifty three dollars to three dollars and fifty cents, depending on where you where you're at. It's different for different locations. But as an author, you have to include that if you're shipping those books out. You include the cost of your shipping inside of the inside of the price that people pay you when they go to your website. Don't just give them the price of the book without shipping because you think you're Amazon. Amazon has trucks and truck loads of books that they can they can get out there. Make sure that you are starting. Remember, they started in someone's garage. They started inside of a garage. That's how Amazon came to be. Um, and so they didn't have free shipping when they first started off. They had to use UP UPS mail, USPS mail, and they had to use FedEx. They were using the, the, the giants in the industry and they had to pay for that shipping. So they included in the in theirs too. It's the cost of doing business. So as a new author, outside of shipping it and including the cost of shipping in your books, on your website make sure that you have copies on hand the more copies you have on hand the better it's going to be and here's here's what i say to to those of you who are who are are new to this um set a goal for how many books you purchase when your book first comes out if you want to make um an extra thousand dollars a month and your book costs you your book you're selling it for twenty dollars it costs you maybe seven dollars per book right um if your book costs you seven dollars and you're selling it for 20 then do the math that's 13 dollars that you're making per book outside of the the shipping whatever you put on there for for shipping um so you need to sell about 70 70 close to close to 77 books per month to make that thousand dollars so if you've only purchased 10 books, if you've only purchased five books or in the in the case of, of a recent group, if you've only purchased anywhere between one and 10 books because you're like, I'm just going to give them away to, to friends and family. What was the point in writing that book? You need to have copies on hand that match your goals. You can honestly sell 100 books per month. You can sell 500 books per month. You can sell 5,000 books per month. It's all about the level of effort that you put in. But you have to keep books on hand so that when you have those when you have those books on hand, if you bump into a stranger. I, 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 talked, to, I talked to two young ladies on Friday. 
that had published a, a book with me in the summertime and amazing group of women um and look for i'm looking forward if they're watching i'm looking forward to the event that we discussed uh surrounding your book um because it will make a huge impact in your community but one one of the young ladies said said listen said i'm involved in in you know heavily involved in my church and there's so many people that are always talking about their new authors their their brand new authors but they haven't um they haven't put anything out there and so the fact that they are well the fact that they're new authors i purchase books from them every time she's she's following the the law of reciprocity and supporting but she doesn't have any copies on hand for herself so we said listen you have to get some copies in your hands so that you can when you purchase a book say look i'm going to purchase your book you purchase my book that's very simple when i was in a in a, in a program with uh with kendall ficklin the boss program um amazing amazing group if you're not a part of the g community definitely look into it but in the in the g there are so many people who wrote books who published books and um and we would we would purchase books from each other because that level of support if you're buying one book and or you buy a book from one author and then buy a book from another author and laws of reciprocity is that okay i buy one they buy one that's money that just stays it stands static so you're not gaining or losing but here's what really happens when you start supporting others they start promoting you too and you start promoting them so your book that you purchase from them and their book that they purchase from you may include may bring five more people to come and purchase your book so that one book just brought you five leads and that one book that you bought from them may bring them five leads you have to keep copies on hand though so that when you tell someone hey i have a i have an amazing book they can go back and they can they can go in their pockets in their wallets and pull out the the amount that it costs and i always tell my authors don't sell your book for less than 20 dollars if you are are trying to be trying to be industry standard and you know everybody has their book on in your category for 14.99 how long did it take you to write that book how long did it really did it take you to write that book how much how much pain did it cause you if you wrote an autobiographical book there's a lot that you had to relive to get on those pages um, if you've written a book about overcoming something specifically, and when I say something specifically, maybe you've overcome abuse, maybe you overcame um, molestation, maybe you overcame um, domestic violence in your situation, maybe you went through a divorce, maybe you you were triumphant as an athlete. It doesn't matter what you what you went through. You went through that. You paid the cost already. So don't sell your book for for less than that that twenty dollars some people i'll tell them you shouldn't be selling your book for less than 25 less than 30. depends on depends on the the size of the book and depends on the the content that's in there if that content is going to help someone grow they may spend twenty dollars and learn something that's going to help them make another thousand or make another ten thousand or make another five thousand or hundred thousand in their lives realize that people invest in what they believe in and there are people out there that believe in you even when you don't believe in yourself so keep that price at least at 20 but keep copies on hand and the reason i say not less than 20 what are they going to do if you sell it to them for 14.99 you got to go in your pocket every time and find five dollars and a penny or if you sell it for 15 dollars, you got to go in your pocket every time and pull out a five dollar bill right what are they going to do with that five dollars go to starbucks and get a cup of coffee you can't even buy uh you can't even buy a crate of eggs anymore with five dollars so understand that inflation and the and not only inflation but also the blood sweat and tears the work that you've already put in entitles you to that price but you have to make sure that the content is good so every there in network marketing there was a uh, there was a three foot rule that we went by right and that three foot rule is everybody within three feet of you needs to hear about what it is that you have and if you take that attitude into your book then everybody that you come in content with 
in contact with should know that you have a book and should help you promote in some way, shape or form. Even if it's just that you tell them, it may be years later that someone comes back and says, man, I remember when you wrote your book. It really inspired me because it now I've written my first book. I've had that happen so many times over the over the past eight years because I put out a book and so many people have come back and said, man, you inspired me to write mine. Don't sleep on yourself. Now, I give you this last example when it comes down to keeping copies on hand. Um, one of my one of my favorite movies is the movie Dream Girls. I don't care what you think of me. I love the movie. Right. I love the movie. I love the story of the, of the the triumph, where they came from and how they got to where they were. Well, in the very beginning of the movie, they were they were just getting themselves out there. They didn't have a real audience. They didn't really have a platform. They just had an act and they had they had these wigs that they turned around and, and twisted backwards to, to make sure that uh, that they stood out from the rest. It looked the same as everybody else, but to them, that was the change that they needed. They got the opportunity, and when they got the opportunity, they finally went and got in a studio with uh, with Jimmy Ray Earl, right? Yeah, y'all can y'all can sit on that. Jimmy Ray Earl, that was his name. Now, uh, Jimmy Ray, he put out a put out a song. The guy who who was the producer at the time, he owned the Cadillac lot. And the song was bought me a Cadillac. Most of y'all remember this movie and y'all sitting back like, yeah, I remember that part. I remember that part. If you haven't, go watch the movie. Well, when they put out the song, bought me a Cadillac, Cadillac car. People came along and they stole the song just as it was gaining traction. They came and they stole the song. They remade the song and they got it on major platforms. Now, the people who made the song were furious the originators of the song were furious it was like how how could you uh how could you let them take our music this isn't supposed to happen this was we 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 put out we put we put everything into this and and jamie fox's character looked at him and said yeah we need to get on on major radio play and they said that costs money again he owned the cadillac lot he took those cadillac keys and he threw it on the table and he said what you call this and after watching that, after watching that particular scene, something in me sparked and said, wait a minute, I got all these books sitting on my shelf. At the time, I might have had about 15 books and was going through some rough times. And those 15 books, every day I set myself a goal of selling at least five books and then reorder books and reorder books. And that is what you have to do. If you're running into a financial situation like, man, nobody's buying my books. Do you have books on hand? That's the honest question. If you don't have books on hand, books on hand for people to buy them, then what makes you think they're just going to go look you up because they're inquisitive? There are millions of things going through people's brains every day. You have to stay in front of them. Keep that book on you so that when you run across someone that you haven't seen in a long time, ask them, hey, would you love? Would you like to support me? Sure. Just wrote a book. It's only $20. It's only $25. And be confident in your price because people are willing to invest in your dreams if they know how they can support you. If they don't know how they can support you, they never will sleep on that one right or as my pastor would say you can put that in your pipe and smoke it now next one is is um thinking that the opportunity thinking that the work is done or looking for opportunities i want to put those two together when people finish writing their books um and if you do me a favor if you have any comments or any questions or if this is if this is hitting you in your in your in your in your, in your soul Go ahead and, and leave a leave a comment. Let me know that you that you that you're listening or that it's helping, right? Because that's the goal of these coaches' corners is to help somebody out there who's been struggling as an author. You have the work, but you just haven't maximized it, right? Um, but I'm gonna put these two together, thinking that the work is done and looking for opportunities. Because when the book finally comes out, most people sit back and they say, "Well." You know what? My book is my book is finished. I'm done with it. This is this is, has really been a journey. And now it's here. 
So now everybody's gonna gonna buy it. Well, I got news for you. You're not Harper Collins on the best man. So no, Oprah Winfrey does not know you. Um, you're not the guy on Brown Sugar, ironically played by the same character, Tay Diggs, who as soon as the book came out, everybody was was looking for the, the information that was inside of it. If you haven't built a platform yet, people don't know you. People are still beginning to learn who you are. People are still searching for the information that you have, but they don't know that you were the one that had the information that's going to bless their lives and that's going to take them to the next level. So you have to continue looking for opportunities to connect, look for opportunities to be a speaker. If your book has a sense of training, look for opportunities to do professional development workshops, look for opportunities to go into corporations. They're always looking for speakers to enhance their meetings. Just recently, I was I was listening to one of my favorite favorite podcasts and one of the young ladies who was being interviewed is Honore Crowder. Um, and we we met a long time ago. We met when I was when I was in the insurance business. She actually came and spoke to those of us who were in the office. It was probably about about 10 of us in the office. And she spoke to us about about taking ourselves to the next level little known fact now she's written i want to say she's written about 50 50 books since in the past 18 years she's written about 50 books and grossed over 4.5 million from her books because she's a trainer she's a speaker and she's an author she's looking for those opportunities to connect with others. And like I said, this was one of my favorite podcasts. So me hearing that she was on this podcast, I'm like, I remember when I was sitting in the office and she was sharing this, this content. I don't remember everything that she said at that point, but I do remember that she had books with her. This was before I finished my book. And we briefly talked about the fact that I was in the process of writing my book, but she had to get on to another meeting. Um, saying all that to say, you don't know how many opportunities are out there if you stop working. Um, I know that there are, there are people who are pastors and their churches don't even know that they have books. There are people who are teachers. Their students don't know that they have books. There are people who are principals. Their, their staff, their, their district doesn't know that they have books. You have to continue promoting your book the same way that you put the effort in to write it now it's time to market. Writing your book is probably about 10% of the process. Marketing it and continuing to sell it is the other parts of parts of getting in front of it. Now, if you again, if you think that it is it it stops just when you get your book out there, you got to continue looking for those opportunities. Continue looking for opportunities to be a vendor at community events. Be a vendor at conferences. Um, if you hear about a, a neighborhood brunch or a citywide brunch or a citywide event, find out how you can be a sponsor to get your information in front of your target audience. If these people that are going to be at the event are in your target audience, then spend a little bit of money to become a vendor. Spend a little bit of money to, 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 to create an ad for yourself and that highlights your book. These are things that you have to do. It doesn't stop. And most people these days are talking about organic, 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 organic traffic. Um, you know, you you just keep posting and that's what's going to going to make it happen. That's part of it. But you have to continue um, the advertising. You have to continue the investing. You have to continue to connect with people who are doing what it is that you want to do and spend a little bit of money with them support their events and watch how many people they tell about your services because there's a there's an old saying here in Houston closed mouths don't get fed and if you if you got a closed mouth what makes you think that people are going to look for you just because they like you people can love you and still not talk about you find those people who are in your tribe that are looking for your book people that are in your tribe that are looking to support you because believe it or not, 99% of the people that I know today, I didn't know two, three years ago. 
99% of the people that I know that I've worked with, I didn't know two or three years ago. I love each and every one of you for different reasons, but I didn't know you two to three years ago. And that's because you never stop promoting yourself. You never stop um, promoting your, your services, promoting your book. Yeah, it may be annoying to the people around you, but guess what? They may not be in your target audience. They may not be in your tribe because there's somebody out there that when you are talking about your services, when you're talking about your book, when you're talking about what it is that you wrote about, when you talk about the experience that you went through, they want to hear it and they love it every time that they hear it because they are true fans of yours. Continue pushing your book at all costs. Once again, listen, I'm going to take a quick uh, a quick break, probably about two and two. Um, we got to go to the business that pays me and just hear, a, hear a, a quick commercial. We'll be right back in about two and two. If I can just keep it just all the way, just 100 with you. Like for me, B-O-B-M, this is the, the company that, that helped me to take what was, how can I put it? What was just an idea, right, in my mind. And, and, and it sounded good when I said it to my students that, hey, I'm going to write a book. But then allow that to now become something that's not just realized. I've, I've not only wrote one book. But I've written three, or well, actually four books. This will be the fifth book that I've um, either wrote or helped to write. You know, three of those have become number one bestsellers, two Amazon bestsellers, and one of them is international bestseller. And I'm just saying, like, if it wasn't for B.O.B.M. and not just the, the publishing side and the writing the book side, but I'm talking about the coaching, right, help me to understand that, you know what? This isn't just pages that are that are collected and put into a book. No, this right here is a is a whole business, something that can generate multiple streams of income. And that's exactly what it's done for me. Uh, it's opened up the doors for speaking opportunities, it's opened up the doors uh, for me to to uh, earn revenue off of the book sales, off of courses that I've created uh, based on the book, uh, leadership uh, development programs that I've school-based programs that I put together based around this book right here right and so um it's allowed me to bring in a community of fathers right and help build up fathers and so this thing has done numbers numbers for 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 me for my family and for the community that I serve and so uh BOBM is is nothing short of amazing uh my coach Sugar Ray Destin Jr like for real like he is the real deal, and so uh, I'm 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 more than grateful to have cross paths and continue to do work with Bobm. If there's anybody that's on the fence and you're like, man, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't. Listen to me. Listen to me. Stop playing games. If you got if you got a story to share, you need to put that in the book. And if you're gonna put it in the book, don't just try to wing that thing right you need a coach i promise you you need a coach you need a community you need somebody that has a proven track record right that's going to get your book positioned the right way in the marketplace and that's none other than sugar ray destin jr um and his team i'm telling bobm is the real deal go ahead and put your money where your mouth is and make it happen All right. Listen, man, I, I, I love that dude with, from the heart. Um, I remember when we first uh, connected, it was at a at a conference and I call this a, a dream conference for me. Um, in Dallas, Texas, we we met. The question was asked, you know, what is the what is the system that you want to to break? And we're both big on helping the youth get to the next level and he's taking that thing and run with it when i say run with it um he is doing he is doing 
amazing, uh, amazing work out there in the in the Waco area, and uh, and he has helped. He puts on a, a summer camp every year. Um, him and my brother uh, Ahmad Washington, uh, they put on this camp, um, the size of a man, and it's not just for for young men. There's the size of a man for for young men, but there's the young kings and queens that are a part of this. And he takes it serious. He takes it, uh, truly takes it to the next level and does great work. But he's taken that book and allowed it to take him literally around the world. But not only has he taken it around the world, but he's also um, booking himself at, at different speaking events and conferences and putting on hosting conferences and uh, and doing doing so much, so much amazing work with it. Um, and this was back in 2018 when he first published his book. So, you know, if he's if he's doing it, if I'm doing it, you can do it. So um, let's get back into into this coaching. Hey, Miss Nisi, I see you out there. Thank you for uh, for tuning in. Um, the the last few we're going to put them all together is um, and these are the mistakes that new or existing authors are making um, so that they're not really taking themselves to the to the next level um here's one that as as uh, as peter griffin would say on um on family guy it really grinds my gears right um authors that don't have have websites are author pages right and what i mean by that is you have your profile page that's cool but you don't have an actual website where people can go to purchase your books so it makes you look really amateur or you don't have actual author pages and when i say author pages i'm talking about social media facebook um facebook you can get a business fan page so as an author you need to set up a an author page that way you can run ads to your book because your book may lead to other services but if people don't know that you exist you can't you can only get up to 5000 friends on Facebook. You can have a bunch of followers on your on your Facebook profile, but you can't run any ads on Facebook. That's that's one of the places that everybody needs to have their own um, page set up. And it doesn't take that long to set it up. Now, most people are on social media for the social aspect, and I love that. But as an author, you're an entrepreneur. So as an entrepreneur, you need to continue to promote and market your services. So that's one of the ways that you can get in there. And here's the thing. If you are going to promote your services and you realize, wait a minute, the circle that I'm around, the support is lacking. The support is minimal. Well, spend a little bit of money investing yourself and put in your specific target audience in that ad spend. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on Google. You can do it on YouTube. You can do it on Instagram. You can even do it on LinkedIn. If you didn't know, these platform, all these platforms, including TikTok, they all have, they all have, um, they make their money. You get the free pages, but guess what? They make their money from people investing in ads, people investing in ad spend. If you are not, if you are not spending that money on on those ads on a consistent basis, and then then who's going to find you other than the people that you've been around? I call it the six block mentality. If you want to get outside of that six blocks that you've been in your whole life, and that's usually our neighborhood or the people that we work with or the people that we went to school with, there are other people out there that are looking for you that have similar interests as you. Um, but if you aren't looking for them actively, how can they find you? And here's a great thing on Facebook. You can spend as little as a dollar a day to promote your promote your book, to promote your page, to promote your services. And if you have it targeted right, you'll start to see results right um, on YouTube, on Google, on LinkedIn, on on TikTok, each one of these platforms has where you can spend an ad budget to get your professional your professional page a little bit more viewership, a little bit more more viewing. And if you look in your newsfeed right now, 
you'll see a bunch of people that have actually targeted you, which is why you'll see something at the very top of their, their feed that says sponsored. That means they're paying to find you. If they're paying to find you and they are major corporations or um, other other businesses, other platforms, what makes you any different? Spend money so that you can find that right audience that you've been looking for. Because believe me, there, there are over 7 billion people in this world. And a lot of those people are looking for the services, looking for the insight, looking for the things that you offer. You just didn't know that they existed. And you got caught into this small box that everybody told you was all there was to this world. The world is much bigger than the six blocks that you're used to. Get outside of the box and realize there is no box. Spend a little bit of money on yourself. Make sure that you have a professional website. Make sure that you have professional author pages. Now, as an author, and this is a mistake that I see a lot of new authors making, you don't even have an Amazon page. Your book is published, but you have not went on Amazon and created a page for yourself. Why? Why? If people are reading your book, they want to hear more about you. If they don't know how if they don't know who you are and they read this amazing book, they're looking to connect with you. Everybody's not going to do what people like myself do. I'm a publisher. So what do I do when I read a great book? I go and find that author. I'm going to their social media platforms and I'm connecting with them. I'm not just I'm not just looking them up. I'm actually connecting. I want to have a conversation with you. How did you put out this amazing piece of work? What was it like? What were the things that, that were going through your mind? What brought you to this conclusion? Because that's how you grow. And most people stop growing because they only saw themselves as, oh, I just put out this little book. No. Once you put out your once you put out your uh, put out your book, you're in the same category as a lot of these these other authors. A lot of those big names that we look up to now were self-published. They were self-published authors. They just continued to work, right? They just continued to work. Now, here's a here's another one. Um, you're not supporting other others. And when I, I know we talked about that earlier by purchasing books from others, but there's so many groups out there. A lot of the admins are not looking for promotions, but you can build genuine relationships with the people in those groups. There are a lot of people that you will meet that when you start start looking at some of the questions that people have in those on those, um, whether it be Facebook or LinkedIn groups, the questions that they have are the same questions that you had when you first started. Or you're going to learn something from someone who is at a higher level and answer the question that you had as well. Connect with other authors in those groups and surround yourself with people from similar backgrounds, similar experiences. Because the fact that you wrote a book, there's a young lady that I'm working with right now. Her story is amazing. Me and we, we joke all the time because she wrote a her book is is close to 300 pages. It'll probably probably be 300 pages when we finish with it. And she took the advice literally and she started connecting with others on on a specific platform. The platform that she connected with, she had zero zero connections when she started. She said, you know what, because I listened to you, I now have about 500 connections and each one of them are saying that they want to that they want to hear more when my book comes out. They're excited when the book comes out. And that's because she connected with people that have similar experiences as her. She took the advice of the coach and she went and she started building those connections. That's what you have to do. Build genuine connections with people that are like you. The, the world is wide open now, right? It's, it's ironic that we call it that the, the first three letters of every website is www, which means World Wide Web. But yet and still, we stay in this small box in our local community because we're scared to get outside of the box. There is no box. Realize that you have access to the entire world at your fingertips, literally at your fingertips on your keyboards. Now, the way that you use it is up to you. Um. Next thing is, is lack of communication. And here's, here's the reason I say lack of communication, right? I've had, 
I've worked with several, several hundred people. And I love each one of the people that I get a chance to work with. Right. God bless me with a larger platform. And so when I work with these people, I get a chance to communicate with them. Now, the ones who communicate frequently learn. They grow. They go to the next level. I learn. I grow. I go to the next level as a result of those connections. And then there are those who I don't speak to for for months on end. And there's a miscommunication there. Right. And the only reason that there's a miscommunication is because people don't check in and they they only view the world from from their their viewpoint. And here's what I mean by that. If you are a if you are an an author, then there's always a chance to grow. I always end up coaching somebody on a a normal call um, outside of a few few people there's there's maybe two or three people that every time i talk to him i get a i get a good coaching and lashing right and i love them for that because every time we have those sessions i grow but because this is what i do on a consistent basis i just love to impart wisdom in others i love to um impact others in a positive way if they come to me and they say man my book isn't selling then i'm going into coach mode and it's, it's not even something that they're paying me for, but it's something that I just love to do. I want to see you get your books off the shelf. I want to see you get your books into the hands of people that are looking for you. I want to see you win on a consistent basis. And people that if you if you are not communicating with others, then um, people don't know how they how they can support you. Right. If it's if it's family members. If you talk to somebody that's in your family and they don't know that you have a book and you mention that you have a book, they may say, hey, give me give me 10 copies of your book. I think I know 10 people that I can sell it to. But because you've been closed mouth and and holding on to some frustration, well, my book initially did so well and now it's not selling. Nobody knows you. I'm not saying that in a negative way, but honestly, there are over 7 billion people in this world and people get caught inside of their own heads. And when I say that they get caught inside of their own heads, everybody's going through something right now. Right. There are people that are going through sickness. Somebody in their family is sick. Somebody in their in their family may have just passed on, crossed over to the other side. There are people who are are facing eviction. There are people who are are dealing with issues at their job. There are people who are who who may have just been blessed and they can only see the blessings in front of them. But because you didn't communicate that you needed help selling your book, then it just sat there. And there are so many people that really want to support you, but they don't know how. They don't know what it takes to sell your books on a consistent basis. You may have somebody that works in a in a call center. If they work in a call center, they're probably working around anywhere from two to five hundred people, and they can, you know, they can talk to their coworkers. Hey, man, my 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 friend just published this amazing book. Um, I would love to, you know, can you can you take a look at it? Offer them five dollars per book that they sell for you. If your book is twenty dollars, you still made fifteen. And if you're taking the profits out of it, and let's say you only made eight dollars per book, they made five dollars per book. You now have more people that are helping you sell. This is the reason that so many network marketing companies have gone on to multi-million dollar and billion dollar status because they realize the, the power of leverage, leveraging your network. If you're not leveraging your network, you're sitting there with your mouth closed, wondering why nobody's supporting you, wondering why people are against you. People aren't against you. They don't know that you needed them. Speak up. Speak up and speak often. When you talk to friends, when you talk to family members, let them know, hey, man, my book is my book is phenomenal. but Nobody's buying it. You have any ideas? They may come up with something. They may introduce you to somebody like me that can say, hey, let's sit down and talk. Because we can get your book moving in ways that you couldn't. But because you sat there closed mouth with your with your face crunched up, don't nobody want to support me. That's not the case. People actually want to love on you. There are more people in this world who want to love on you and support you than there are that are hating against you. Right. Focus on the focus on the 99 that are supporting you, not the one that's sitting in the corner frowned up. Next one is people, new authors stop growing. This one is huge. 
This one is huge, huge, huge. As a as a new author, um, if you if you publish with BOBM, then nine times out of ten you went to bestseller status. If you went to bestseller status, if your lead author, your visionary author, did their their due diligence, then you should be inside of the bestsellers club. Inside of the best bestsellers club, there are weekly videos where we actually bring in people to talk about different levels of the business. We had a we had a, a young man, um, my my brother from another mother, Mister Mister Ter Terrell Jones. Salute out of uh, out of New York. That came in and talked about turning your book into a into a six figure coaching business. We had uh we had Miss Lizzie Tree, my sister, my sister from from the the one and only Mister that came in and talked about being on international international podcast. We had uh we had we had my one of my new business business partners and and I I call her a sister as well, Miss Priyanka, out of out of. I'm not sure where she's from because I don't want to I don't want to get the country wrong, but she does amazing work helping authors to sell their books. And we had a, another young lady, Miss um, Angela Wiafe, who was in one of the books that went international, bet, international number one in four different countries and is working on a, a new project that's getting ready to come out in July. Um, for those of you who are looking to become international bestsellers. So there's always training. There's always opportunities out there. If you're not in, if you're not in, in a part of the BOBM communities, like I said, bestseller university is getting ready to launch in March. March 1st, which is about 10 days from now. So there's plenty of opportunity. Continue looking up different opportunities. Continue reading those, those books on marketing your book. Continue reading those books on, on becoming a better speaker. Continue reading those books on becoming a coach. Continue reading those books that are specific to authors and entrepreneurs. Continue listening to those podcasts. The Winning Mindset podcast is a brand new podcast where they, they are interviewing um, people from all different walks of life about having a winning mindset, right? There's so much opportunity out there to continue to grow. And shout out to Miss Miss Nisi, Monica Earl Washington, and uh, Miss Kristen Davis for taking the, taking the lead on that. There are so many opportunities to grow. You just have to look for them. What most people think what most people think is that hey once my book is out i'm done i'm the expert i'm i'm good no your industry is always continuing to change so you have to continue to change with it there's always something new that you can learn there's always something new that you can learn so continue looking for those opportunities just because you got your high school diploma just because you got your, your college degree, that doesn't mean that you have to stop learning. Continue learning and continue learning how to earn. Because the more you know, the more you grow. The more you grow, the more you can help others. So don't get stuck in that same position of, well, I did it, so I'm, I'm good from here on. No, make sure that you continue growing that you continue going to the next level right so these were just a few of the things i could go on and on for days about the mistakes that i've seen new authors make um and not just new authors existing authors as well my story is something like this when i first wrote my book it did very well when it first came out, I was excited. I was I was ordering ordering new boxes of books at least every every two weeks when it first came out because I was so excited, right? And I wasn't ordering ten books. I wasn't ordering twenty five books. I was ordering like fifty to hundred books at a time because I was excited about the potential. I was setting up setting up uh, book signings at local coffee shops and realized I. I actually was kind of offended because the people would come to the coffee shops and they just looked and they were like, they were looking and they, they admired the banner that I had. They admired the fact that I had books, but it was almost like, what are you doing here? 
we're, we're, we're here for coffee. We're not here for you. Right. And it was and initially I was offended because I didn't understand the way to make it grow. So I took time. I went back and I changed. This was my initial cover. And I love this cover forever because Jennifer White, who was the young lady who made this for me, she I told her I needed the cover by Thursday. It was a Sunday. By Tuesday, I had the book and I had the cover in hand. I was able to publish the publish the book. Um, she's passed on to the other side. So I love you for life, Jennifer. Um, but I changed that cover the following, maybe the, the following year. And I changed it and it looks like a horrible cover because at that point I didn't know anything about Brandon. I wasn't good at, at a uh, design. So it was the things that I wanted on there. I had a, I had a white, um, mansion and a white BMW. And I was like, yeah, everybody's going to love this. And then I had the points. It looked like bullet points. It looked like I was inviting people to a network marketing meeting. So the cover was awful, right? But I still sold copies of it because I was excited about it. And finally, having a conversation with my mentor, my mentor said, man, you need to take you need to take your brand into another level. Have you tried this company? I tried it out. They sent me my cover back. I loved it. And that is the cover that's been on that book ever since. When I got that cover, I actually set up the official book tour. And that official book tour took me across to a different, a few different states um, from Texas to Atlanta to Missouri to, and I know Atlanta is not a, is not a state, but you know, it, it kind of feels like one. Um, Pennsylvania. I, I went up to the East Coast because on the West Coast, there's certain laws that you cannot, um, have those autographs, autographs in in bookstores. I don't know why, but that was the the rule that they they hit me with. But after I had that book tour, it took me to different opportunities. And I started anytime I anytime I was speaking, I started asking people, "Do you have a budget for books?" Anytime I would, anytime I was promoting my books, I was asking them about speaking opportunities. I started to open my mouth more, and people started asking me to help them with their books. And that's where we are now. So the things that the things that I'm sharing with you, I'm not sharing sharing it with you because I got it out of some book. These are actual things that I've been through in the past 13 years. Um, because like I said, I started writing that book in 2010. I didn't finish it until 2014. And I was so scared that the publishing was not going to go well. So it took me another nine months to even publish my first book. Imagine sitting on a book that you've had written for several months just because you don't know. That was me. That was me. That's why I do what I do. I don't do it. I don't do it because I want the, the numbers. I do it because I love you guys and I want to see you all go to the next level and not make some of the same mistakes that I've made. Because I promise you, I got a hard head that's hard enough for all of us. I've made enough mistakes for those of us like me out there who really have a passion for helping people, for serving people, but just don't know the route. If you are one of those people, you haven't written your book, just go ahead and scan that uh, scan that code right next to me on, yeah, on my left, um, on my right, I guess, um, and book your consultation so we can get you going to the next level. But these are the mistakes that I've seen new authors and experienced authors make. Make sure you're coachable. Make sure you are ready to go to the next level and make sure that you're willing to put in the work because the responsibility to be the best selling author is yours. It's yours. If you want to sell books, have books on hand. Connect with others who are doing what it is that you want to do and love on people. Listen, that's my time. I appreciate you guys. Um, and ladies, I, I love y'all to the moon and beyond. I love y'all to life. Until next time, see you next week on uh, Book Talk Live. Love y'all.